When Domino's is out for delivery, use Domino's new dinner bell to get the family home. Ring the dinner bell and they'll come running for their mix and match favorites. Choose any two or more like bread twist, specialty chicken, pizza, or salads for only $5.99 each. Time to get down to business. Ah! Come with me. Good grief. Sweet me! <laughs> To the Estadio Charua for the second half of this Group D game between Canada and Colombia. Both sets of players doing a little warm up ahead of the second half. I'm sure both coaches will have been frustrated at how few goal scoring opportunities were created in the first half. And they'll be looking for better in the second. Good to see Michelle out there. Apparently suffering no ill effects after that knock she took at the end of the first half. It will be Colombia who kick off once the Canadian players have finished with their motivational huddle. Well, there's a lot at stake here. We saw Korea beaten soundly by Spain earlier today in this group. If Canada or Colombia want to finish top, they'll have to win this surely and get themselves a few goals. Now, there are, of course, meetings with Spain for, the each, for these two to look forward to. Very interesting result today. PRK, the People's Democratic People's Republic of Korea, lost 4-1 against Germany. They were expected to pose quite a threat, the Korea DPR team, and maybe they still will, but that's not a good start for them at all. That's a really intelligent ball from Reyes. She spread play beautifully there. Unfortunately, Bohorketh couldn't make much of it. No substitutions made by either coach so far. Reyes. She brought in Perez, but Perez's ball was poorly directed. Well, that pass wasn't intended for Heitema, but it got there. Unfortunately, she couldn't keep possession either. Antoine. Breaking the golden rule of defending. Don't pass across the face of your own goal, but she knew what she was doing and found Jade Rose. Now Revere. Shaw will chase it, but it'll be a keeper's ball.
And it took an 89th minute goal from Anderson Williams to win the third, fourth place playoff in the under 17 championships for CONCACAF and reach their sixth consecutive FIFA under 17 Women's World Cup. They are one of the six ever presents. It used to be seven, but Nigeria have not qualified this time, so the list is down to six. Well, we have had a look at all the teams now in the four groups. Who has impressed you? Maybe Ghana, maybe Spain. They were probably the two most impressive in groups A and D so far. Kazanjian, maybe Germany, playing in Colonia today. Well, it's well over from Lara Kazanjan of Quebec Rex. That's R-E-X. It doesn't start with a W. Valeron will take the throw. Too much tugging there from Maria Reyes of Capital Soccer. She gets a warning from the referee as well, though no yellow card. We've just had the one yellow card showed to Valeron. Shaw with the shot, oh goodness, what a good strike that was and as the ball came down, up went the offside flag. Of course, if it had gone straight in, there would have been no flag. And the free kick is only half cleared. It comes back to Shaw, one touch, and then against the bar, so unlucky. And I think that's the closest that Canada have come. Probably the closest either team have come. Cleared by Marcelo. Perez couldn't gather. Rose comes away with the ball. It's a bit of holding on there by Perez, but the referee let it go. And perhaps Akindoju can take full advantage. Kazanjian will work to keep that in. And it's bounced off her for a throw. She is perpetual motion, Lara Kazanjian. Full of energy and running. Away by Andrea Perez. That's tidy to bring in Jaime. Valeron with the throw for Canada. Well, Canada are very proud of their record of being ever present at the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup Finals, dating all the way back to New Zealand in 2008.
This is the sixth edition. Just have another look at this attempt from Shaw. She steadies herself. And you can see that as the ball comes back, Akindoja would be offside and up goes the flag. Rose steps in. And Jade Revere started playing for West Rouge Soccer Club at the age of four. One of the players who was at Jordan two years ago. And there is her ball for Shaw to chase. Heitema leaves it for Revere to take. Full international Jade Revere made her debut a year ago against the United States of America. And she's forced a corner. Put behind by Andrea Perez. Place for Union Maddalena. Balata has come forward for this. Revere with the delivery. And it was Balata who got her head to it. Couldn't steer it on target. Well, Heitema was coming in just behind her. Heitema challenges. We've had 10 minutes played in the second half. Still goalless between Canada and Colombia. Maret Perez. Bit of frustration there as she shoves Rivera out of the way. It's a heavy touch from Shaw. She slides in there and concedes a free kick as she does so. And our German referee, Reem Hussein, tells her to cut that out. Well, you could argue that they were both on the ground swinging their legs. And we're going to see the first substitution of the match. Well, it's Lina Jaime of Club Deportivo Gold Star who goes off. And she is replaced by Gisela Robledo. Robledo is a more attacking player. And I think the idea is that Colombia feel that they can win this, and why shouldn't they feel that? Maria Reyes, oh, instead, stepping forward there was Kelly Caicedo to take it. It's just touched to her, and Caicedo, plenty of power, but it was always going over the bar.
Now Canada are going to make their first change. Off goes Tenny Akindoju, one of the Vancouver Whitecaps players. And Kyla Novak comes on to replace her. Well, we just keep an eye on what Canada are doing here with uh, Novak coming on, whether she'll go into the middle of the attacking three or whether they'll switch Heitema or Williams there. Keep you informed about that. At the moment, it looks as if Heitema has gone into the middle. Well, I'm sure Canada are aware that they need more of a goal threat they have hit the crossbar in the second half but we've had nearly an hour of play and there hasn't been nearly enough attacking threat and that's from either side and out comes the yellow card the studs were showing there and the check in the uh, challenge from Wayne Wayne Berlata Well, the laws of the game are very clear on this now. That sort of challenge where you lead with your studs off the ground will always get you in trouble with the referee. There's confirmation of a yellow card for Wayne Balata. Well, we have had an hour now and still goalless. Valeron trying to bring some order to the play. That's not a bad ball forward to pick out Kazanjian. Well, the yellow card's out again. This time it's Andrea Perez in the book. Well, that is a really poor challenge from Perez, two-footed, jumping in. And much like Balatas a moment ago, you're just not going to get away with that in the modern game. Well, that looks like cramp for Balata which is worrying given that we've only had 61 minutes of play. Ryan Wilkinson looks on concerned. She's currently completing her A badges with the FA of Wales. Didier Luna had great success with Bogota region women, seven leagues in 10 years. Balata, being careful not to go in hard in the tackle again, not so soon after a yellow card. Kazanjian, Balata, Shaw. That's an intelligent ball from Shaw, and it was nearly gathered by Heitema. Little thumbs up there from Jordan Heitema. Comes from British Columbia. Well, it flicked up onto her arm, and there was an appeal for handball, but it can hardly be a deliberate handball when it bounces up off your thigh. Good pace from the substitute, Robledo.
Well, Robledo complains, but surely the right decision to give a goal kick. Well, you wouldn't believe that Colombia had such an impressive attacking record in qualifying with 15 goals because so far in this game, they've hardly worried the Canada goalkeeper, Anna Karpenko, at all. Valeron can't keep that in. Balata brings in Valeron. Good defending from the Colombians. Just a moment's hesitation from Antoine. Oh, and Antoine's given it away now. He's a real opportunity. And the referee has awarded the penalty kick. Robledo is brought down. And just to add insult, the referee is going to show a yellow card as well to Maya Antoine. Well, it was here that it went wrong with that misplaced pass and in trying to tidy up her own mess, Antoine. Clearly fouls Robledo. A penalty it is. And a yellow card, as I say, for Maya Antoine. Well, here's the big opportunity. A long run up. And it's wonderfully saved. And the follow-up, too, is kept out. Look at those celebrations. And look at the distress on the face of Marez Perez. Well, Perez is devastated. And Karpenko is delighted. That's what it feels like to miss a penalty in a FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. Well, that's a real let-off for Canada. It's one of the rare occasions that Colombia have really got forward into a dangerous position. And it led to a penalty kick. And let's give some credit to Karpenko. It wasn't the best penalty you'll ever see struck, but Karpenko did well to keep it out. And the follow-up save was important as well. We've had three quarters of this match. It stays goalless between Canada and Colombia. Well, Mar Marez Perez's strike partner, Luisa Fertel, is substituted off and on in her place is Natalia Ramirez she's with the Development Academy in the United States of America
Well won back by Williams. That wasn't the best of clearances from Karpenko. But she's got a bit in the bank at the moment, Karpenko. She can afford a poor clearance. She's just saved the penalty kick. And how important might that be come match day three in Group D? You may well look back on that incident as a, a key moment for Canada. And particularly now that Heitemar is in. Well kept out. Good goalkeeping by Michel. The game is starting to spread, starting to open up. Well, Andrea Perez with the foul. She has already been yellow carded, and that's a strong old challenge on Kazanjian. They've both been hurt by it, and the referee is showing a second yellow card to Andrea Perez. Here's the chance from Heitemar, and off goes Perez. Two yellow cards. Canada will face 10 players from Colombia for the remainder of this match. That's 10 as a maximum. Here's the challenge. It's late and it's clumsy. And if you've already been yellow carded, you're absolutely dicing. Well, it's not been a great night for players called Perez in Colombia shirts tonight. And there's the confirmation of the second yellow and the red card for Andrea Perez. That's really neat. Lovely play from Williams. She'll get a corner out of it. Twenty minutes remain. We still await the first goal. Goalkeeper's come for that. And she's really done well under pressure. I know she wasn't able to hold it, but that's good goalkeeping from Michelle. Well, the chase is on here. Well, there's going to be another yellow card. Jade Revere goes into the book for her challenge on the substitute, Natalia Ramirez. Well, the referee is handing out the yellows. There's confirmation of one for Jade Riviere. Reyes with the free kick. How did that stay out? Well, you're getting some tired legs out there and we are starting to get more meaningful attempts on goal. Maria Reyes. And a fingertip save. Pushed it onto the bar from Karpenko. Alpenko's had some meaningful involvement in this match, hasn't she? Substitution for Colombia, player number 
Colombia are going to make another change. <coughs> Elizabeth Carabali comes on to replace Maria Reyes, who just had that shot. Well, the 10 players of Colombia, so close to taking the lead there. The corner will be taken by the player who missed the penalty kick, Marez Perez, swung at by the substitute, Ramirez. And another change for Canada as well. Well, off goes Balata. Great temptation for the coach to take off players who have been yellow carded. Sonia Walk has come on for the remainder. Marcelo. Marcelo takes the throw. Ball is won back by Caitlin Shaw. As we move into the final quarter of an hour, here's Valeron. Kazanjian. Walk straight into the action. Another of the Ontario Rex players. Takes a touch and it will be a corner to Canada. Shaw takes it, and it's headed in. A simple finish in the end for Jordan Heitemar. And now the 10 players of Colombia are really up against it. Sixth goal for the under-17s for Jordan Heitemar. Well, the goalkeeper decided not to come for this cross. It's a delivery with a little bit of in-swing from Shaw, and it's 1-0 to Canada. Well, there's confirmation of the scorer, Jordan Heitema. Captain of her side and she's really leading by example there and it may look like a simple finish but of course it's all to do with the timing of the run and the quality of the delivery things have just got an awful lot tougher for Colombia down to nine The trouble is when you have a down to 10 players rather than nine outfield players, the trouble is when that happens, you always want to keep your back four intact, keep your defense intact so that things don't go ragged there and hope to nick one. And it's getting to the stage as we approach the final 12 minutes or so that 
Sent a long way out for a shot at goal and off the crossbar. Can you believe it? What a strike. And Caicedo can't believe that it stayed out. Well, we've seen it earlier in the match. She really can strike a ball. Well, let's have another look at this. I don't think the goalkeeper gets anything on it at all. Well, we've had a few against the frame of the goal in this match tonight. Revere. Fouled by Marez Perez. Well, they are trying to keep two up front, our Colombia. Marez Perez has been pulled a little bit into midfield at the pacey Robledo and Natalia Ramirez are being kept up front because they have to offer a threat Julian Valerance had a steady game at left back for Canada just the one blot, and that was her yellow card. First of the game. Coming inside half an hour, but she's hardly committed anything to warrant the referee's attention since. Clean connection from Karpenko. <coughs> Ramirez gives chase. Well, that's well defended. Neat work from Antoine. Shore is fouled. Well, you can just hear the case for the defense from Gisela Robledo that she took the ball but you can't come in from behind like that FIFA have done a lot to make the game safer for players came about because Sepp Blatter didn't want people from being discouraged from playing the game because of the risk of serious injury while they're playing and developing after they've played. And so the laws of the game were tightened up with regards to foul play. And you have to say it's been a very good initiative Well, Jade Revere has called all the players round her and the captain, Heitemer, is there as well. Now they turn to get some instructions from Rianne Wilkinson as well. Here's the goal. Simple as that. Good run from Heitemer. And the pain is particularly felt by Mareth Perez there in that picture as she was the player who missed the penalty kick. Walk. A 
will be a throw to Colombia. Taken by Marcelo. Lovely turn by Sharon Ramirez. Well, they get up and get on with it, Marcelo. And that's a clumsy touch from Robledo, and it goes out for a throw to Canada. Quarter finalists in 2008, 2012, and 2014. But Canada have never been past the quarterfinals at a FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. And when you look at their success in qualifying and their success in other age groups as well, it does make you wonder why. And also makes you wonder if this is the year. It's taken a while for Canada to impose themselves on this game, but helped by the red card. They now find themselves in the lead. Andrea Perez collecting two yellow cards. And I don't think she's got much to grumble about with regards to either of them. Hooked forward. Robledo will look to get on the end of this. Here is Robledo being watched all the way by Rose. This is not where Robledo <laughs> wants to be. She does not want to be in the, t in the corner trying to waste time. This is not what she's doing. And it all ends up with a goal kick. Five minutes remain. Canada lead Colombia by that Jordan Heitema goal. And it took a long time to, to really liven up this game, but it has provided better entertainment the longer the second half has gone on. Kazanjian. Well, Kazanjian couldn't get a tackle in there. Colombia battling away. That's calmly done, but not a great ball out of defense from Antoine. And look who that is, back helping the defense, realizing the importance of holding on to this lead. Well done, Haitama. And here's Haitama again. Walk. And well, she's given that away. Too much pushing. Well, Robledo is furious at that decision. Well, there's the pushing. More than once. And a petulant display at the end of it all. Referee tells her to get on with it. Well, next up for Canada, it's Korea Republic here in Montevideo on Saturday afternoon. And then on Wednesday, they face Spain, and that's in Montevideo as well, here at the Estadio Charrua. Well, they should all be good, but I think I might particularly look forward to the Canada-Spain fixture. Well, that's a lovely little touch through. It's kept out, but only momentarily. Well, Novak with the original shot. 
but Colombia found themselves stretched at the back and it's a simple finish for Anderson Williams. It's her sixth goal for the under 17s. Novak's shot kept off the line by Marcelo, but cruelly, from a Colombian perspective, there was Anderson Williams with a simple finish, and that, this late in the game, is surely that. 88 minutes on the clock when that one went in, and with nine players, there would surely be no way back now for Colombia. Goal for Canada by Sarah 17. Martinez. Williams Anderson. Gol de Canada por la jugadora número 17, Williams Anderson. Well, that's loose from Marez Perez. It hasn't been her night, has it? There's a bit of space now for Jade Revere to move into. One of the players that was at Jordan two years ago for the fifth edition of the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. We're getting well stuck into edition number six now, aren't we? All the teams have made an appearance. Hazajian with the cross. Had to be claimed by the keeper. Good safe hands from Michelle. She hasn't done much wrong tonight. Well, that's a heavy challenge from behind. Referee gives Robledo what I should imagine will be a final warning. And now we're just moving into four minutes of additional time. Again, it, it's a tackle from behind whether it gets the ball or not. Shaw brings in Revere. Well, we are into the four additional minutes. But Canada are going to take the opportunity to bring in Jessica De Filippo. And she replaces the scorer of the second goal, Anderson Williams. Well, Anderson Williams scored a famous late goal to help seal qualification for Canada, help them reach these FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup finals. And tonight, although not quite as dramatic, she's got the clincher. There's no coming back now for Colombia. Down to 10 players and trailing by two goals to nil. Valeron getting forward from fullback, but dispossessed. Well, the pressure is relieved by an offside flag.
Robledo is quite a feisty character. He's keen to make sure that free kick was taken a little bit more quickly than Canada were inclined to do. Valeron, very steady at left back tonight. Kazanjian, it'll be a throw. Here's Kazanjian once more. Not everything she tries comes off, but she never stops trying. So room for a shot. Oh, it's squeezed into the net by the substitute, Jessica De Filippo. Look at the smiles on those Canadian faces. Well, not for the first time in this game. We've seen a good cross from Valeron. But after that, well, look at that. All my own work and a very good finish for 3-0. Well, we have had the four additional minutes. There's confirmation of the goal scorer. Perhaps 3-0. Seems a little bit cruel on Colombia. It was goalless for so long. It was almost sterile for so long. But then, following the yellow card for Andrea Perez, Canada really took advantage. They were soon in the lead. They'd already survived a penalty kick, well saved by their goalkeeper, Anna Karpenko. Crestfallen looks on the faces of the Colombian players, but all smiles from the Canadians. They have won this by three goals to nil. Ryan Wilkinson having a word with her players. And there's plenty of whooping down there. They know that they got the job done. The player of the match today in Estadio Charrua is number It's nine. tight at the top of the group, isn't it? I said it would be a tough old group. La jugadora del partido en el Estadio Charrua el día de hoy es con el número nueve, 